the cannabis tablets. I can't read it, but it says cannabis here and it's got the leaf here. I got my whole life to smoke weed, but for now I know what the people need. Give me some. Give me some. As you can see, we are in front of uh, Ben Dronker's uh, Hemp Museum in Barcelona. Uh, we want to make uh, a nice report and uh, it's early, so we're the first uh, visitors today. So we want to make a nice tour of uh, hemp, marijuana and cannabis for you. Mr. Dronkers made it more beautiful than it ever has been. Really, really impressive. The Book of Cannabis, the Tablets of Cannabis. Thou shalt grow, thou shalt sow, thou shalt smoke. Cannabis. Just to leave for good luck, make it wear out over the years. Here's uh, a few pictures of uh, the old way of extracting hash from, uh, from the plants, like rolling off charas with the hands. Here we see people uh, pressing, and here it's a guy showing off all the different slates. Beautiful, beautiful pictures. It's also very nice that uh, it's, it's in an open air situation, you know. Uh, you can imagine it can be really warm here in the summer. So it lets some air in out. Beautiful. So you think you know pipes? Here's pipes. Ever seen that? Beautiful classic pieces. I can hardly imagine what they may be worth one day when the whole world has accepted cannabis as a, as a means to heal or relax yourself. And by the time that gets accepted worldwide, these items will value millions. And so far, I'm sure Ben put down some money for it and they have a value, but if cannabis gets accepted like alcohol would be accepted this would be like an old brewery or or so it can only go up in value nice beautiful i always wondered i have a drawing of a bavarian farmer with one of the hats and a beard, and it's one of a series of smokers of the world. I have them in my own little museum. And I asked the, the woman, the artist, why is this guy in smokers of the world with this Meerschaum pipe? She said, well, in, in Bavaria, Germany, in Austria, above 1600 meters, tobacco doesn't grow, but hemp does. So actually all the old farmers in the Bavarian Alps have been smoking hemp 
uh, the leaves and the buds without the seeds, not the strong stuff, but instead of tobacco, because uh, it grows everywhere. separate the fibers from uh, from the wood inside. Can you imagine this was hard work doing this all day, eh? You can feel like then this would be going through, it's a smaller one. But this would be going through and it would come out if you break it you can you can separate the fiber from the inner stalk and the inner stalk is fit for stables or you can make uh, uh, bricks for the fireplace out of it. Uh, really, the whole plant can be used. There will be no leftovers in the field from uh, industrial hemp. And if you wanted to remove the fiber from the stick, oh, it's, stuck. Uh, it's blocked. But if, if, if you look in here, you can see that they put it in there. They separated the fiber with the nails in there. But this is more or less. The line, look here, the line, here's another breaker. Ooh, that's even harder, it's on the floor, man. <laughs> so you'd have to sit on your knees or be bent over all day. Wow, more separating devices. You can imagine they use that to, to get the fiber off. And for uh, fakirs, just starting. <laughs> Beautiful, I love it. Oh, you can see uh, this woman breaking, the, breaking up the stems for the fiber. Beautiful. And here. I, I always have the idea when the Dutch uh, discovered Indian hemp in Indonesia and decided to rope their ships uh, and rig their ships with sails with hemp, uh, it made them be better seafarers because if there would be a storm in the ocean and you had those flash sails and there would be a, a storm with rain, the boats would be top heavy and any push of wind would blow them over and uh, hemp sails don't take up the water so the weight, uh, the, the, the weight in storms and rain is not getting higher so uh, the, the ships stay more stable so I think hemp made uh, sailing around the world a lot safer and securer. The tools of the trade. You know, uh, people always talk like uh, through the eye of a needle, but wow, man, you can look through this eye of, of this needle. As you can see, it was used widely, not only for, for twine and rope, but also for the bumpers uh, in between the ships and the docks. And uh, everything on this ship is made of, of hemp, except for the wood. So from the beginning of the line, breaking the material, separating the fibers from the, uh, from the stalks, refining the fibers, and we go to the spinning wheels, and from the spinning wheels, or straight, people go to the weave machine, as I think they call it, and uh, you can see this is very crude material, but this is, this is what, what uh, was the end product. And here you can see this picture of the big wheel turning. Beautiful. Well, the, the, for instance, we all know um, the, the Red Book and Mao Zedong, the big leader. Everybody was walking in the same clothes in those days in China. You know where those clothes were made of? All made of hemp. China is the largest hemp producer in the world. seen how uh, the hemp and the stalks uh, of the hemp plant are being used. Uh, another uh, uh, important product of the hemp plant are the seeds. Uh, uh, you can make food, uh, diesel, but uh, in the early days it was mostly used to make uh, cosmetics and now it's also being used to make beers and wines. 
but uh, yeah, you can see some of the products down here, especially from Duputi. I know that brand because that's the one brand it all started with. And when I had that in a glass case like this, nobody bought it. But as soon as there were two more lines of hemp-based skin products, people started to compare prices and buying it. And yeah, that's the way business works. Without competition, people think you're a stranger, but when three or more people have spent money in, in the hemp uh, products, uh, people start to see it as a product. If you look at these parts, these are auto parts, you can see there's hemp fiber inside. So Ford, Mercedes, BMW, Boeing, they are using hemp in the separation parts of the and the separation walls of the of the vans and uh, Mercedes and and BMW have even integrated it in their steering wheels, uh, so the, the the steering wheels don't break and uh, cannot snap the airbag on impact, making driving and well even impact with cars safer, uh, with cars safer with uh, with hemp. And you can see it's impressive uh, what can be made out of hemp. Even the rhinoceros there is made out of uh, hemp fiber. Some artists must have had some time to create something beautiful out of hemp. But you can see not only is cannabis being accepted more and more in society as a, a substance that creates pleasure like other substances we allow but it's now entering in the in the in the industry of the world and here you have uh, you can see how many hemp parts are in a Mercedes but you never read about that Mercedes is not like I will use hemp mm -hmm. but now you know so this is hemp fiber with concrete and I, uh, these, these are being made in, uh, in, in, in several countries. I, I am aware as a coffee shop owner that the one country that really always been against coffee shops and uh, liberty around cannabis in the Netherlands was France, especially under Chirac. But I also know that since 1963, they build houses with these bricks in France. So they're the hypocrites. And then here we have more products uh, made of hemp, like uh, from Hemp Dog. I have these socks as well, a real nice guy from the Czech Republic. Um, um, yeah, shoes. Adidas made shoes with them, and they're coming out with a new line. Uh, hemp plastic shoe, hemp plastic um, frisbees. I have some of those things as well in my collection, uh, but this is impressive. This is actually some of the first uh, hemp products and when Ben bought that I bought some of these things I have some of these things as well and I also have chillums made out of this rough material like that that, that shape and there's Henry Ford of course with his hemp car which he tried to damage with uh, a sledgehammer but he couldn't built in 1941 it contained cellulose fibers derived from hemp sisal and wheat straw. The plastic was lighter than steel, yet could withstand 10 times the impact without denting. And if you would talk about a book that is uh, important to us, that's uh, Jack Harris' book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, explaining how important, how good hemp is, why hemp has been forbidden so long. Hemp is not bad and marijuana is not bad. It's so good and so versatile, it can ruin all the existing industries and that's why they didn't like it. And now they have to bend over and accept it. I like that. William, can you please read the bike? This is a... Uh the, the Furry Three Brothers, Cheech and Chong. This is uh, marijuana coming alive in the movies and in music and magazines and comics. And uh, I, I sometimes state that, uh, of course, uh, you know, 
the guys that sell hamburgers and the guys that sell the soda and the red cans with the uh, with Senda, those people. But I think the best known and the best spread logo in the world is the Marijuana Leaf. You find it everywhere, even where you don't find the hamburger boys and the, the Coca Cola machine. Teaching your movies, the whole box. Yeah, well, here we have the, the American uh, propaganda machine, as we know it, Assassin of Youth, Marijuana Girl, Reefer Madness, the bestseller. Look, John Wayne is even beating down on marijuana. The youth is doped. Weed from the Devil's Garden. Where's the one that made a whore out of the woman? Uh, Marijuana girl, there's more of these, you know, it's actually disgusting, but yeah, this needs to be in the museum as well. Shit, there are more people about There's other, no? Advocacy. And here we, from here, from the post and propaganda department, we go to the medical department. Oh, that's, that's interesting part. Cannabis in the body, body. we have an endocannabinoid system. That's why so many people start feeling better pretty fast after using uh, cannabis, especially in, with ingesting it in oil or, or other extracts. And here you can see a uh, little development of all the tinctures that's been made of cannabis before prohibition, when it was completely accepted as a medicine. I can imagine in the old days, these American guys selling medicines in bottles it was cannabis tincture, but at least you said, yeah, I noticed it, you know. Uh, but this is, this is actually, look how many different Medicine had been made out of cannabis before it became forbidden. You know, it's actually amazing uh, that uh, we don't even see that many shapes and forms of this medicine in the Netherlands. In, in, in the United States, they raced by us and they're 20 years ahead of us now, but uh, yeah, I, it's really impressive. It shows people uh, what, what was wrong. People were doing it 200 years ago. And, we rediscovered it because, well, we are allowed to rediscover it. Here's more tinctures and medicines with, with cannabis in it. This says cannabin compound, cannabis indica, reliable, efficient, and for female neurosis. But another thing I want to point to is for this one, for the, against the painful monthly periods. Queen Victoria of the UK used cannabis when she had a period. She, she, as history tells, she wasn't a pleasant person without periods, but uh, with periods it was even worse. So uh, in those days it was all okay until the United States uh, decided to uh, take this all away from us. And the people that's bringing it back into business, mostly not so much in society, the United States. Uh, in the old days we already had tinctures and salts and creams and all kinds of things and when they allowed it back in, the only thing they allowed back in was bud from Bedrocon and uh, of course they are now making a CBD rich uh, strain but uh, I'm really surprised that seeing all these tinctures and other extracts in solution and pills that, yeah, when, when we got marijuana back as a medicine from one supplier only, it only came in, in bud. A bit disappointing. I'm a smoker, I use cannabis for pleasure. Uh, we had fiber for clothes, paper, plastic as we have seen it. Uh, we've seen the medicinal part. Uh, now we are looking at the part that's uh, the inside stock of the plant mostly is used for uh, for stable materials and for animals and not not just because that's the leftover part um, 
hemp uh, stable filling takes up 70% more of the ammonia smell of the urine of horses and other animals. So you can leave it on the, on the floor longer and it's, it, it's real good stuff for your animals. It's animal friendly as well, you know. And this is made of the seeds, which is mainly products uh, uh, for hoof and leather oil for horse riding and things like that. So, uh, and, and I'm sure Hen, uh, Ben wanted to show us all the products made of hemp, and I'm sure he's got the biggest collection in the world. But there's so many more products uh, made out of hemp, and uh, well, I hope uh, we will surprise the world with. Uh, with this material, not only the few people that take the time to come over here, and that's not degrading because there will be millions of people over the world, but we need to get the ignorant people in here, not the people that already have a liking to marijuana. This is a place you have to show these hard-headed politicians around in to show them why they forbid it, you know because they all have shares in the oil industry and in the farm mafia. Comfortably in my hemp plastic chair. I feel good already, you know? I want furniture like this. This is, this is, could be wool and hemp, because what you see here is the different fibers and uh, but I have a costume made out of uh, hemp and wool and the shirt I wore underneath it for that occasion was made of silk and hemp. So there's combinations of everything is possible. If you look at this, grow hemp for the war. Uh, people that have been to the army, uh, also in the Netherlands now, we use those gun belts and all the belts and whatever belts you have. Uh, to go into battle, they're made of canvas, and, and, and canvas is cannabis with flask. So, uh, actually, there's no war going on without canvas being involved. So, cannabis is probably being used in every war, which is a shame, I think. Okay, here's a remarkable painting. Here you see a guy smoking and blowing his smoke into the dog's mouth. And as you can see, it's a whippet, so uh, he probably don't want him to run around him all day and have a relaxed time when he's stoned, so he spikes the dog as well. But then go. Well, after seeing this museum, I can only say if you're in Barcelona and you're not going to the museum, you missed a great opportunity to discover and know hemp and cannabis is in, in its many forms. So, in Barcelona, don't miss the hemp museum. I got my whole life to smoke weed, but for now I know what the people need.